few weeks ago, I was driving out of a parking lot and I reached my hand to the side door where I usually store my parking ticket, nowhere to be found. Meaning when I rolled up to that window, I was about to have to pay the full price, aka like $30, even though I'd only been there an hour. So immediately I pull my car into another parking spot and scramble to find my ticket. Finally, about five minutes later, I find it in the coat pocket I threw into the back. I pull up to the booth and I literally see the parking attendants walk away. 8.02 p.m., free parking after eight. So here are the facts of what just happened. I lost my parking ticket. I spent five minutes looking for it. If it had been in my door, I would have pulled up too early and then had to pay. Losing my ticket saved me money. And it's so funny because I could have been so pissed off. Like I could have been like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I spent five minutes looking for a ticket when in reality I didn't even have to pay. But instead I was sitting there literally telling Carrick, holy shit, I'm the luckiest person in the world. Like the universe conspires for me. What has completely changed my perspective is realizing that luck isn't something that just happens to you. Luck is the story you tell yourself about what happens. Now I know what you're thinking. You're probably just like lost parking ticket. Yes, you got free parking, whatever. Yeah, low stakes. But that's actually the point. The more that I've been able to reframe the small stuff, minor inconveniences, small things that don't get done the way that I want to, the easier the bigger things are to also reframe. Like I always think about those stories we hear around 9-11. Someone spilled coffee on their shirt in the morning. They were late to work. Okay, that's the entire story you could tell. Or you could be like, wow, I was late to work, so I was not there when the towers went down. That is wild. Like the facts are neutral. Your interpretation makes you lucky or unlucky. And all of this isn't just like wishy-washy, woohoo, positive thinking. There is actual neuroscience behind this. So let's jump into what your brain is actually doing. And I'll talk through some examples too. First of all, your brain is taking in 11 million bits of information, 11 million every single second. It goes from everything you hear, you see, you smell, you taste, etc. But your conscious mind can only process 40 bits per second. What this means is your brain is automatically filtering things and it filters based on what you already believe. This is what is very largely known as confirmation bias. So if you believe you're unlucky and that bad things always happen to you, you know what your brain is gonna filter out? Goodbye all the good things that come your way. Goodbye all the positivity. Uh -uh. All of the negative things are just gonna be highlighted. So it's not that bad things are necessarily happening to you more. It's just that you notice and remember them more. The other part to this is your brain has something called a reticular activating system, also known as your RAS. Its function is basically your brain's search engine. Like, have you ever decided you really, really wanted like a car or anything? For me, it was a Jeep Wrangler that was like very recently. And suddenly once I started thinking about it, all these Jeeps started popping up on the road. And it's not because people just started buying Jeeps all of a sudden. No, Jeeps have been popular for a long time, but it's because my RAS, it's a little search engine, is looking for it everywhere. Your RAS looks for whatever you deem important. And so when I tell myself I'm a lucky person, you know what it latches onto? Ooh, luck, opportunities, good things. So the luck has always been there. I'm just noticing it more because I told my brain to filter for it and search for it. But here's where it gets more interesting. People that think they're lucky also behave in a way that makes them more lucky. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. I started to take more risks because I thought they would pay off. I started to talk to more people, which gave me more opportunities. I tried new things, meaning I took more shots at the goals I wanted. That also meant I stayed in the game longer because I thought things would work out. Of course I had more abundance. Of course I had more opportunities. The more I believed in my luck, the more I behaved lucky and the luckier I became. The unlucky version of me before was never taking those risks. I would barely reach out to people. I would quit as soon as things got hard because I was like, oh, it's not gonna work out. Self-fulfilling prophecy. What you believe becomes the reality you experience. And I have seen so many examples of this in my personal life. When I got laid off this past year, I obviously, of course, felt shock, felt sadness, felt afraid. But having, you know, the mindset that everything works out for me, everything has a reason in my life, I am lucky. One of my initial thoughts too, and you can go back and watch my video on this. I was excited because I was like, holy shit, is this the universe's sign to tell me, take this time, get severance, get unemployment, aka some financial stability and work on your side hustle. You've wanted to do content creation for so long, like as your main thing, go and do it. And so amidst all of this like, panic, there was also a part of me that was so, I don't know, like ecstatic 
for being laid off. And it was just my RAS system scanning for all these opportunities and it just picked one. Obviously like that doesn't take away from all of the bad emotions I felt around the layoff. And even though I ended up not doing that and I decided to just start looking for another job, I did it with the mindset that, you know, whatever happens, if I don't get another role soon, I still have something to fall back on. It won't be for nothing. And luckily I landed on an amazing team two weeks after and because I was transitioning and there was a different start date, I also got a week off in between. So my layoff was lucky. That sounds really weird to say, but that's the story I tell myself. In some ways, I am glad that it happened because it got me to where I am today. Another story I absolutely love to tell, and I'm sorry if you've heard this, if you've been on my channel for a while, but when I quit my job without a backup plan, I was gonna take a month off, pursue content creation, and then I would start applying for jobs after that, but I had no income and I was honestly so terrified. But I told myself I was someone who was lucky. I told myself I was going to be the one that made it. And so I started posting. And because I did, I connected with one of my very good friends now. Her name is Rebecca Joy. I always talk about her. Go check out her YouTube. I love her so much. She referred me without my knowledge to a paid content creator program. And guess what? The first day of my unemployment was the first day of that contract. So I literally had no gap between my income. Obviously my income was significantly lower, but I was still bringing in some money so I could pay for rent. And I'm just like, gosh, I am so lucky. If I didn't put myself out there, if I didn't believe I was lucky, luck wouldn't have come my way. So again, self-fulfilling prophecy. You think you're lucky. You put yourself out there and you become even luckier. It's just fucking crazy. It's crazy, it's crazy. And beyond my own personal anecdotes, this has actually been studied. A psychologist named Richard Wiseman spent over a decade studying lucky and unlucky people. What he found is lucky people aren't luckier. They just behave differently than unlucky people. In one of his most famous experiments, he gave people a newspaper and asked them each to count the number of photographs inside. But on page two of the newspaper, there was literally half a page saying simply, there are 43 photographs in this newspaper, stop counting. And halfway through the newspaper, he had another huge message that said, tell the experimenter you saw this and win $250. Guess what happened? The majority of people that identified themselves as lucky very quickly saw either the first message or the second message, but the majority of people that identified as unlucky missed both messages completely. They were so focused on counting all of the pictures that they couldn't see what was right in front of them. Same opportunity, different outcomes. Now why? Because the lucky people going through the newspaper were more relaxed. So when they were going through, they were more open to other answers and shortcuts and winning $250. While the unlucky people were more nervous, more anxious, they were so focused on doing the exact tasks at hand that it made them less open to any other derivative. And so the difference is a difference in their behavior. Wiseman also identified four key principles that all lucky people have. One, they create and notice way more opportunities, which is everything we've already talked about from confirmation bias, your RES, self-fulfilling prophecy, all of that. Number two is they trust their intuition more. And the more they trust their intuition, the more apt they are at making better decisions quickly. Number three, they just expect good things to happen to them. They expect good outcomes. And because they expect good outcomes, they take more risk. They act like everything's gonna work out and it does. And because it does, they get even luckier. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy once again. Number four, and this is a big one, lucky people turn bad luck into good luck through reframing. When something bad happens, they immediately look for how this might be actually happening in their favor. Now, I wanna caveat this and say, this is not just silver lining, okay? This is not about finding a little piece of good in a largely bad situation. It's about completely changing what the event means and asking, okay, what if this thing is actually good? What if this actually needs to happen or else something in the future won't? And it's not just doing it for all the big things, right? It's doing it for literally everything in your life. I'll give you another stupid, silly little example. So the other day I was typing up an email, spent like 10 minutes writing up a huge long note about like a follow-up ask. I was about to hit send when, of course, Outlook freezes. 
curse you, Microsoft. And I'm like, really? Not even a draft is saved. So as I'm waiting for it to reboot, of course, I'm kind of annoyed because I just spent some time writing this out. I get a ping from my manager that's like, hey, actually, we don't need to follow up. Um, just close the thread. And I'm like, oh my gosh, actually, Thank you, Microsoft. Thank you for crashing my outlook because I would have awkwardly had sent this follow-up email with all of these asks. Someone might've seen it. Maybe they probably wouldn't have started working on it, let's be honest, but I would have had to send an additional thing like two minutes after and be like, actually JK, sorry for the confusion. Ignore everything I said. It's just these silly little things, you know, where it was lucky that Outlook crashed because Outlook crashing meant that I wasn't gonna create more churn and confusion for someone else and have to backtrack. It's a silly example, totally get it. But this is what I mean. I could have been annoyed about email crashing for an hour when I really didn't even have to send it anyways, or I could just be grateful that it did because I didn't cause more unnecessary work for everyone. Now, let me address this because I know y'all might be thinking something along the lines of, well, Sarah, what if something actually bad happens? Not just parking tickets, not just these silly little things that you keep bringing up, but like, what about grief? What about trauma? What about loss? Like things that are actually very, very painful in this life that we cannot ignore. Totally agree and acknowledge like, yeah. I'm not saying you should just gaslight yourself into thinking everything's wonderful and I should be grateful for everything all the time when it's not. Like this is not toxic positivity bullshit. Life is gonna be hard. Life is going to be painful. There is going to be suffering. We should have the space and time to feel and grieve and process all of those things. What I am saying is in those situations, you still get to decide what it means eventually. Keyword eventually not immediately. Immediately, you should be able to grieve, feel, have whatever emotional response you need in that moment. But when you are ready to process it, and this could be months, it could be years, it could be so long, you get to decide, right? Like, how is this going to define me? How is it going to define my relationship to whatever has hurt you? Is this going to destroy me or redirect me? What does it mean? The reframe doesn't get rid of all the pain. It doesn't get rid of all the bad things that has happened. It just changes what you do with it and how you move forward. And that's what matters. So at this point, you might be thinking, okay, Sarah, you have sold me on the fact that I need to think I'm lucky, but I have never thought of myself as a lucky person. I am not naturally optimistic. This is not for me, so sorry. Well, let me stop you right there because our brains have this lovely thing called neuroplasticity, which is basically our brain's ability to evolve, change, process based on what we learn, new experiences, etc. So every single time you decide you're going to reframe something negative into something positive in your brain, what's happening is your brain is strengthening the neuropathways for positive interpretation, weakening the neuropathways for negative interpretation, training your RAS to automatically scan your environment for more luck than problems. It's literally like going to the gym, but for your brain. And like the gym, you have to show up consistently, right? You have to do this over and over and over and over and over again. And then you're going to get strong and swole and lucky. And obviously this is going to take time. It took me quite a bit of time. If I got laid off, I don't know, three years ago, I would have probably been like, wow, my life fucking sucks. Everyone hates me. Life hates me. I'm so unlucky, etc." But now I'm just like, why is this going to matter in my life? And even if I can't find it in that moment, I can always look back and have that reframe. So yeah, you can 100% train your brain to be more lucky. But much like going to the gym, it's gonna take work because we have this lovely thing called negativity bias. Evolutionarily, we have been wired to notice more threats in our environment than opportunities and good things. Because if you were a caveman and you wanted to survive, you had to be very, very good at noticing every single threat in your environment or you would have died. And then the lineage stops with you, you know? So our brain is designed to focus on problems. In fact, research shows that negative experiences impact us three to five times more than positive ones. Meaning you have to have three to five 
positive experiences to combat every single good one. That's why negative comments linger so long or like being embarrassed lingers in your brain so much longer than even graduating high school or college, you know? So when you are practicing being lucky, your brain is probably gonna fight you because it doesn't want to feel that way. It doesn't want to focus on the good because threats are out there. But in this modern day and age, like a lot of our quote unquote threats are a lot of the times, not 100% of the time, but a lot of the times not actual threats to our physical and psychological safety. So as you go through the process of training your brain to become more lucky, it's going to fight back at you. And that's just something you're going to have to notice and work on and fight through. There's one last piece of psychology that I think is so powerful, and it's called the locus of control. People with an internal locus of control. They believe that they have the agency to control their own world. They tend to be happier, more successful, and feel more empowered. People with an external locus of control, they think the world happens to them. They tend to feel a little bit more helpless, give up a bit easier, and not really feel like they have power over their lives. How that relates is when I say I am the luckiest person in the world because I say so, that is an internal locus of control. I don't wait for everyone around around me to show me that I'm lucky. I decide it, so I'm going to become it. Now let me be clear about what I'm not saying. I'm not saying I control the events that happen to me because I can't, right? But I can control the story I tell myself and that shift from life happens to me to I get to interpret the story I tell myself based on the events, the neutral facts that happen to me are why I get to decide I'm lucky. You become the author of your own story. And in that story, you can become the luckiest person you know. So that was the science and hopefully brought to life with a few little personal anecdotes in between. How do you actually do this in your life? Step number one is just to decide you're lucky. This is your starting point. Say it out loud, say it to yourself in the mirror. I am lucky. And that is your reframe in your brain, putting it out there as a goal, starting to reprogram your subconscious mind to become a luckier person. This is your new operating system. Step number two is to look for evidence daily of your luck. And this could be the smallest thing. Look for it anywhere. Like your coworker brought in donuts. Oh, you're so lucky. You got a good parking spot right in the front of the grocery store. So lucky. Notice every little thing every little good thing that happens in your life. And maybe your brain is gonna resist it at first because <laughs> negativity bias, but the more you do it, the more you are training your RAS and the easier it'll become to start noticing all these things. Step number three is to reframe setbacks real time. When something bad happens, immediately ask yourself, how could this be happening in my favor? How might this actually be lucky? And again, you're not gonna have the answer right away. Like I said, a really hard shit sometimes happens in our life. We need time to process it, right? But just by asking yourself that question can start to help guide you. Like I had a really hard time freshman year of college, so hard that I transferred schools. But when I look back now, that is the sole reason I found my person and am marrying my fiance. We became really close when I transferred to his school. So yeah. I had a really shitty time my first year, but now I'm marrying my best friend. I didn't know it at the time. The reframe came later. So if you can't see something as lucky right away, that's okay. Asking yourself the question will guide you through the experience of it. All you have to do is stay open to the answer when it comes. Okay, step number four is to tell your stories out loud. The stories that you tell out loud to yourself and to the others around you will reinforce that version in your brain. So start speaking your luck out loud because that is going to help you reprogram your brain so much faster. And then the last step, step number five, is to act like you're lucky. I've said this so many times in this video, but people that believe they're lucky act lucky so they become luckier. If you believed luck was on your side, all the time, like you were so lucky, what would you do? You would apply to that job, you would ask that person out, you would go start that business that you don't feel completely prepared for. The more you act like things are gonna work out in your favor, the more that things will. Not because of magic, but because you're taking more shots and you're not giving up. And those are the five steps that helped me reshape my own brain and reprogram it to see luck everywhere I go. I'm the luckiest person in the world because I say so. Not because I made a deal with the universe, not because better things always happen to me than anyone else, but because I decided it. I said, fuck it. 
I'm lucky. Luck is not random. Luck is the story you tell yourself about what happens to you. And it's a skill you can cultivate and grow. So with that, I hope this video helps you become the luckiest person you know. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.